everybody, it's Melanie, and I am your Tuesday vlogger on Back to Basics WLS here on YouTube. Also, I have my own channel, which is Exit Melanie. Um, so, how are you? So, this week's topic is about emotional or stress eating. Um, you know, uh, whether or not you are an emotional or stress eater, which I am, uh, and if so, you know, when did you realize it? Was it something you knew about yourself? Um, before weight loss surgery? Was it something you figured out along the way? Uh, and what are your triggers? What, um, you know, I always talk about like being proactive. So you know what your triggers are and you know what to put in place to prevent recurrence, right? That's how you correct behavior. Uh, again, <laughs> me having the knowledge and me um, putting that knowledge into place are two different things. And there's a great divide there that uh, that's what I'm, that's my WIP moment, work in progress. Uh, so anyway, what are triggers and what are some coping skills that you either have, you want to have, you use uh, successfully or any ideas about stress eating. And, uh, you know, I, when I think about emotional eating, I have to say, as long, I don't, I always just remember knowing that I was. Like, I don't remember when, um, I guess I always was an emotional eater. It's when I had the insight to be able to recognize it and say it out loud um, and it was certainly pre-weight loss surgery, you know, um, happy, sad, um, anxiety, stress, traffic, party, any news. I mean, I could, I could, uh, it was a very, 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 very big trigger for me and it, and, and it still is any emotion, any stress, any, anything that I go through. The other problem that I have, um, is not only doing it myself, but I am like the the provider of uh, the provider of stress eating. In other words, one of my friends calls me, and you know, let's say they're going through a breakup, a divorce, or whatever. I'm like, oh my god, and I want to bring cupcakes or cookies or go out to eat uh, or do something. And I have to tell you, it's something I really struggle on with the ladies I take care of, and also with my niece. You know, I um, I I am very careful about it. I have three nieces, but I'm very careful about it. My youngest niece is nine. And, um, so last week I had to get her off the bus. It's her last day of school. She's coming, you know, she's coming to my house. And in my mind, I want to take her for ice cream, right? Isn't that what you're supposed to do uh, to celebrate your, uh, last day of school? You're a kid. But I, I, I didn't do it. I didn't. So for me then, there's two things that I have to work on when it comes to emotional eating. One is recognizing what's going on in myself at the time and trying to put in a substitute behavior. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. The other one is, is recognizing when I'm trying to do it to other people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, and because it's just, it, it just is something that's so ingrained in me habitually, socially, family, um, memory, uh, it, those associations are hard to break. And, um, I, I gotta work on it on a subconscious level because if we're walking around this world, thinking that our conscious mind is 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 running the show rongo bongo okay rongo bongo it's our subconscious mind that's doing a lot of this stuff and that's why when you see people talk about like positive affirmations saying good things to yourself about yourself putting your energy out into the universe um, about what positive things and what good things you want to come your way and doing it in a way where you don't bring up the negative I think if I break this down for myself this is how I break it down um, and I used to do this like professionally when I'd have to develop a behavior plan or a support plan um, for for an individual that I was working with who wanted to, or someone wanted them, you know, to correct, change, put in, substitute more socially appropriate behaviors. However, in this instance, emotional eating seems socially appropriate, or at least it seemed very highly social. Anyway, so we break it down. We'll call it the ABCs. Okay, A stands for antecedent. What comes before? What's going on? Did you get a bad phone call with your boss? Did you get in a fight with your significant other? Um, did you get bad news? Do you have a test tomorrow? Is it too hot outside? Uh, is it somebody's birthday? You know, the, I could find an I can find uh, an emotion to eat on. Regardless, I can find it. Okay, so that would be the antecedent. What's happening first? that triggers B, the behavior. And in this case, uh, for me, it's either actually eating, wanting to eat, planning to eat, uh, or 
putting that onto someone else, meaning, oh, you're upset, I'll be right over with candy, you know, or let's go out and, you know, I, I can remember many, many nights where uh, friends, siblings, people I've dated, whatever, we would just go to the store and do a massive junk food haul and just come home and watch movies or, or, or TV and just, you know, I, so anyway, that would be the behavior. And the consequence is, you know, gaining weight, feeling bad, feeling dirty, uh, feeling shame. Shame is a big word, right? I, I, I know I deal with the shame of it. In other words, like, why did you have to do that? And the negative self-talk, right? Which is what we're, what we're, we're trying to work on and focus on. But anyway, so the ABCs, the antecedent, what comes first? What's going on, guys? That's what I try to do is say, okay, right now, because it's happened to me. And the and since I knew this topic was coming, I've been thinking about it in my head for about a week. And just trying, which has been very helpful, okay? Just trying to break it down and identify it when it happens for me, just so I could pause or uh, be mindful, uh, live in the moment of what's happening. And there's a couple times when, you know, stress comes my way and I immediately... My first inclination is ice cream, pie, cake, cookies. You know, it's never salad. Um, you know, it's never a cup of tea. It's and and I had to talk myself down off that ledge. Um, so I think that's probably a good strategy to use. And you know, many of the strategies, again, the strategies I know that would work for me, and putting them into application and making them work for me. There's a gap. There, there's a gap. Um, <clears throat> and some days I'm on, some days I'm not. Uh, getting better at having more days on, um, but trying to figure out what's triggering me to do this specific behavior of emotionally eat. And what am I going to do? What am I going to substitute in there? You know, and, and we've heard the list, you know, uh, shopping you know we try not to do anything that are transfer addictions but um, shopping going exercise watching TV going out to a movie um, you know going out for a nice tea things like that are some healthier substitute uh, behaviors or more things that we want as opposed to eating or you know if you are going to eat and you recognize that it's emotional you try to pick something that has the least damage uh, the other thing that I have a problem with and I'm gonna try to keep this video relatively short so bear with me is um, the correlation, the relationship for me, Melanie, um, between emotional eating and uh, carb craving, um, or the carb monster, or eating carbs, or the difference between uh, what my brain wants and where my brain is in sync, dependent upon where I'm at in the eating of carbs. In other words, okay, so... I, I'll call last week my bottom, right? After I weighed myself, I talked about it in this channel last week. And so um, that emotionally emotionally screwed with me, I have to say. And I knew it was, and I knew it did, and I ate my face off on a junk food, Carbapalooza, call the parade. Um, there was a party um, for a day before I snapped it in and got it together. Did I know that would make me feel worse? Sure, I did. But, you know, sometimes you're not strong enough to... Uh, climb that ladder and that's where the support group comes in on Facebook the back to basics that's where your friends uh, come in to help you climb the rungs of that ladder when you can't do that yourself right uh, so anyway Wednesday came around and it clicked in my head I'm like okay you know what off the processed carbs crap off the sugar okay but I'm still allowed a little bit of fruit myself now the difference is being a person who likes to make my own decisions um, I felt like I was suffering even though I did it when I had to do it for three days for a challenge to free somebody. I was committed, but it was rough. Now that I made the decision that um, sugar is not my friend, it might be tough in the first couple of days, but it's relatively um, easier. And the interesting thing is I'm not hungry. I mean, I've heard people say this throughout their journeys, and I've said it before too. When, when I eat breakfast at like 10, 9 or 10 in the morning on a weekend like yesterday, and it's 2.30, and I'm not, I'm like, I didn't even think about food. I didn't even, it's crazy to me. And I can't do that if sugar's in my system. Because the only thing that keeps carb cravings alive is the introduction of more carbs. It's just true. It's a little monster that has to die in your body over time. And sometimes that's 48 to 72 hours, for me anyway, until it's totally out. Um, so if any time in that time period you introduce a carb, 
you brought it back to life. And then in my mind, you know, metaphorically, you have to start all over, and that's rough. Um, so any little bite of something sugary, um, I'm at the point right now, and I've never been a restrictive person, but I always wanted to ride the wave of it, meaning make it easy for myself where it doesn't feel like work. And something clicked in with me, and I'm, and I'm riding the wave right now. Right now, I'm doing well. Um, you couldn't pay me to eat a cupcake. Yeah, I said it, me. You know, will it last? I can't go there in my mind. I have to act as if. And if I don't make it, I'm just going to try again because one day uh, I'm going to get it right. And that's what you do. You keep trying. You keep trying to pick new substitute behaviors and put things in there. But there is something to be said um, about the craving part that comes from emotional eating when you're not eating uh, sugar, when sugar is dead and out of your system. Just something to consider because it's been helpful to me. Um, all right. I hope you guys all have a great week. I thank you. I thank you for watching. I thank you for the Back to Basics group again. And um, you guys are helping me more than you know. Your support is helping me more than you know. Uh, I, I'm drinking water consistently every day now. You know, my exercise is still good. And the third component of getting my food back on, um, listen, I'm always going to be an emotional eater. My name is Melanie, and I'm an emotional eater. Absolutely. My name is Melanie. I'm a food addict. It's always going to be there. And sometimes it's going to beat me and sometimes it's not. So I'm just going to keep with the positive affirmations of, you know, I am successful. I am this. Um, you know, I, I eat only healthy food. And I'm going to train my subconscious because it's really the subconscious mind that uh, that's getting us through every day and, and poking us in the, in, in the right direction. So those, keep those positive affirmations up so that my mind gets more trained to be fighting the good fight. But, um, okay, I hope this makes sense. I really do. I feel like I'm... But anyway, I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Thanks. Mm -hmm.